Stefano Minoya. Thank you so much. Thank you. So hello everyone and welcome here today and thanks Birgit for the presentation. So I'm going to talk about uh, accessible presentations for uh, work camps and meetups and first thing if you want you can download the slide deck right now. You can uh, just scan the QR code or you can find the uh, presentation at tinyurl.com forward slash WCEU 2024 dash A11Y presentations. So to give you time to download the slide deck if you want, first thing I have to say that the slide deck has not been checked for accessibility yet. So I will re-upload uh, uh, an updated version which is accessible in the next couple of weeks. But for now I have a few questions for you. How many of you have been speaking at WordCamps event? Okay, how many of you plan to speak in the future at a WordCamp event? So shall we have a round of applauses for next WordCamp speakers? And final question, who is having a great time here in Torino? Awesome. So let's get into it. I'm going to teach you and to tell you something about accessible presentations in three steps. First one, I'm going to talk about equivalent access and then I'm going to give you a few tips and tricks on how to make your presentation accessible. And finally, I'm going to talk about people, disabilities, and limits. Let's dive deep into equivalent access. Starting from the definition of accessibility you can find on Wikipedia that says that accessibility is the design of products, services, or environments so as to be usable by people with disabilities. When we talk about presentations, we have products, slide decks, or any other material that you prepare for your uh, attendees are products. The presentation itself is a service, and also environment uh, take uh, a role in uh, presentations. So consider them, and uh, even if they are up to organizers to decide how to decide the, uh, the environment, uh, the room where uh, a presentation takes place, consider the room and how it's built when you prepare your slides or you prepare your presentation. So what is important about accessibility and why do we call that accessibility? It all starts from physical access to spaces, but it also involves information access. So the basic idea behind accessibility in accessibility at presentations is to enable people to access information regardless of their characteristics in physical, cognitive, or sensory abilities. This is a key point, and how do you achieve uh, information access? By giving equivalent access. And here the stress is that equivalent is not equal. So the goal is to provide a mean to ensure information access to everyone, but not to provide the same exact experience for everyone. I'll tell you, uh, you will see in a couple of minutes uh, a real uh, example of that, and, I'll, and you'll uh, learn better about it. So, oh, a few tips and tricks. Let's get it into it. First thing, take care of your slides just like we would do with your website. So we all know about web content accessibility guidelines, and basically the idea is that when you share your slide deck, you should follow really, uh, relevant web content accessibility guidelines related. How you do that? First thing, add purpose-oriented alternative text to images. The first point here, which is really important for people with, with visual disabilities, is to add an alternative text that is purpose-oriented. So first thing is to understand the purpose of the image you're adding. Are you adding an informative image? So an image that adapts to the content, then in that case, describe the image. For example, here you can see uh, a picture of Torino from the nearby hills. And you can use that as a, an alternative text if that is informative. Is it a decorative image, just like this abstract shape? Just remove it. You can just use uh, uh, an empty alternative text or mark the element as decorative. And if you have complex images, 
just describe the general idea, for example, in a graph, and add uh, the purpose. Describe why you are adding that image. What is the purpose of adding that image? Here we arrive at the example about equivalent access and equal access. You can use color in your presentations. We all know that there are people who do not perceive color the same way. But that is not a good reason not to use color. Just use it and add additional means. This is why we provide equivalent access, such as shape or text. For example, in this graph, you can see that I have used both color, line uh, width, and a pattern to differentiate the two lines. A quick word on contrast. You should take care of contrast by checking against uh, WCAG or uh, using the APCA uh, as a starting point. But remember, those algorithms were developed taking in consideration backlit screens. If slides are projected, maybe it's a good idea to enhance a little the contrast, because otherwise uh, there is an um, environment lightning which is going to reduce the contrast of, image, of, the, of text. Semantics. There are semantics on the web. There is semantic also in presentations. You can add slide titles. When you export slide titles in a presentation and export the presentation in PDF, they could get turned into headings and announced as such for, by screen readers. You can use bullet points as they get converted into lists. And also, a few soft, uh, PowerPoint specifically allows you to check the reading order of objects uh, you are putting on a page. How do you share your slide deck? You can use the tagged PDFs, but as, as I said, tag everything and check, the, and check that using a screen reader. In a few, if you just do that a few moments, then you'll, uh, a few times, then you'll discover that the solution, uh, how to make your presentation really accessible. And when do you, can you share your, present, your slides? It's a good idea to share them at the beginning of the presentation using a QR code and a URL, possibly a shortened one, so that it's more easy to write it and to tell uh, users, uh, to tell attendees um, where they can find the slides. I put a couple of links here of free tools you can use to prepare a QR code and a, a shortened URL. Talking about multimedia content, multimedia content is good. So I'm talking about videos and audios. But just remember that you have, again, to describe whatever you put inside a slide and add alternative for people who cannot hear or see. So add, whenever possible, links to transcripts, subtitles, captions, and if possible, sign language interpretation. Talking ab about subtitles, there are softwares provide the possibility of adding AI uh, transcripts. So even if you cannot afford a person who is transcribing your presentation in real time, you can just activate that function both on Google Slides, even if it works only in English, and in uh, PowerPoint to get uh, automatic transcription automatic AI transcription. Whenever possible, of course, it's better to use human transcription. And finally, when you talk about people with disabilities, or when you talk with people with disabilities, use inclusive language. And I found a very simple rule of thumb that you can follow for that, is just to ask yourself if the focus is on the person or on the disability. So use first-person first person first language. For example, talk about people with disability. Here, the focus is on people. And avoid identity first language. So don't say the disabled. And here is a list of uh, a few words which you should not probably use. Uh, and uh, I uh, invite you to find for equivalent words in your language and check them and learn how to use them properly. I'm going to focus only on three of them. 
First one is invalid. Invalid literally means not valid. Do you really want to say a person that it's not valid for something? Second one, suffering from. Not all people with a disability are suffering from their condition. So you're making an assumption which might not be correct. I would say that it's not correct, usually. And final one, don't talk about normal people when you think about a person without a disability. Because no one is normal. At least I'm not. In general, use uh, something like people with Down syndrome instead of down people or down. And talk about deaf people, person with low vision, autistic person. And in this case, be prepared if a person tells you that they want to be defined another way to change it. And if possible, ask, how, ask a person with disability how they would like to be defined or how they would like to define themselves. Finally, a word about people, disabilities, and limits. If there's one thing that I would like you to, care, uh, to bring home from this presentation is that you should not think about disability in terms of limits. This is a real bias. Because you know, we all have limits. So limits do not tell us apart, do not tell apart people with disabilities and people without disabilities. And you know, because there are only a few people who do not have limits, and those are superheroes, and uh, we would like to be superheroes. I think sometimes I am a superhero, especially when uh, I do work for uh, people with disabilities or work with uh, accessibility. But uh, actually, we are not going to say the word. We can just make it better one person at a time. So in the last few seconds of my presentation, I'd like you, if you feel like, to close your eyes and think about a person with disability you know that you want to make the difference for. So thank you for your time. If you want to reach out to me, here are a few links to my social medias, or you can find me in the hallway, as uh, Birgit said before. I'll be uh, there starting from uh, 10 to 10.15. And again, if you want to download the slide deck, you can find it here. Thank you for your attention. Well, thank you so much, Stefano.